As you all know, I love getting things in the mail, especially cards and letters. I have all of these envelopes all bundled up, but they're not exactly what you think they are. When I open up the lid, I've got a secret box inside. There's another one over here, and there's one down here. As a matter of fact, these are all secret boxes. I bet you want to know how I made these. Let me show you how. For this project, I need eight pieces of cardboard and nine envelopes. Now the cardboard is cut just a little bit smaller than the envelopes. I'm using the Judykins note card envelopes for this project and I just chose a, a variety of different colors. I'm going to set two of those envelopes aside and we'll work with those later. But I also want to stuff the cardboard into my envelope. You need to secure the cardboard inside the envelope and I'm going to use this mosaic tape. This is the Judykins mosaic tape and it's a great tape because it's double sided, it's sticky but not too sticky, but the best part about it is I can tear it. I like the fact that I could tear it because it makes it easier to work with. Just put a little bit of tape on the cardboard and you just peel off the liner and then insert that right into my envelope. When you press down on it right here, now that secures the cardboard inside the envelope. And then you just want to lick the envelope to seal it shut. Now let me show you a stack of envelopes that I have here. You notice that they're a little askew or a little off center. And that makes my stack of letters look a little bit more natural, like it's just sitting on my desk. But I have to cut the hole or the center out of these envelopes. And let me show you a little trick that I have here to make those cutouts. I have a rubber stamp here that's the perfect size to make my box. It's this solid rectangle stamp from Judy Kins. And what's great about it is that I can just ink this up with a little ink and because I'm cutting this away, I don't have to stamp the image perfectly. Now remember, my stack of envelopes is going to be a little askew, so I could stamp the image at a little bit of a cocky wobble kind of an angle, and then I'm going to cut it away. Now I'm using the Judikins high-vis ruler to cut out my center here. I've got this pen knife, which is great because it has a nice sharp tip on it, and the ruler has a steel edge here, so when I'm cutting, I won't cut into the plastic. Just line it up along the edge, and then make that cut. And because I'm cutting through the cardboard, you have to make several passes so that you cut all the way through the three layers of paper. Now, pop out the center of this cutout here. And now we're going to start assembling the box. Now I've got my six envelopes here that I've cut out. And just as a reminder, that seventh envelope is going to be the bottom, and envelopes eight and nine are going to be the top. To assemble this stack here, I'm going to tear off a little of the mosaic tape, tear it into these little strips, because I don't want the tape to show around the outside edges here. So I just tear off a little bit and just lay that right down along the edge of the cutout. Now that I've removed that release paper, I'm going to stack up my envelope here. And you notice that I'm lining up the center cutout, which leaves the outside edges that look a little random so that it'll look more natural as it's stacked up. I'm going to attach it to the whole stack, and you can see the cardboard. So I want to put a liner of decorative paper so it looks beautiful when you open up the box. Now to make the liner of my box, I'm using this beautiful washi paper from Yasutomo. It's this beautiful printed paper which has some gold accents on it, and it's just going to make my box look super. What I want to do now is use that same rectangle stamp as the template to form the liner of this box. So I'm stamping it right in the center, 
And I didn't re-ink the stamp up because I don't want too much ink on the paper. I don't want it to bleed through. So there's just enough of a line here so that I've got a guideline for folding. Now flip it over and I want to fold it up so I can just barely see the outline of that rectangle. And just keep moving it around. And I'm making this a little bit smaller than the actual rectangle. That will allow the, the, the liner to fit perfectly inside the box if it's just a little bit smaller. Then pinch the corners together and that creates the crease and then I move it out backwards because I don't want to see that little fold here on the inside of my box. Match my centers together and then push it out backwards and this creates the little box shape that's going to line the inside. So this looks a little clumsy right now but when it goes inside the box you'll see how it comes together. Now here I have one that I've completed folding and I actually have trimmed off some of the edges. So you can see when I center it right in the middle of the box here, it folds over and I'll just glue that down with a little bit of this tape. So we're just going to set that aside for a minute while I create the covering because you don't want to see all of these edges. Now I have another envelope. I've actually stamped it with that same stamp. I just take the bone folder and I score it along the outside edges of the rectangle. And now I'm going to make this diagonal cut with my knife from corner to corner. Now push that flap backwards through and this is going to create the frame that sits on top of the envelope. You notice that the envelope is, or this little flap is hanging over the edge and I just take a pair of scissors and I trim it so that it's not too long and it doesn't hang out so you can't see these little flaps. Now this is the eighth envelope that I'm using and this is what's going to create the top flap of my box and also the hinge. But I kind of want to decorate this first. I have this beautiful plum branch stamp from Judykins but it's coming from the right side of the envelope and this is where I want to put the address and it would cover up the address. I'd really like the plum branch to come from the left side here and I have a little trick using that same rectangle solid stamp that I had earlier I can mirror the image so it, the plum branch comes in on the left. Just ink up that stamp, make sure you get nice coverage of ink, stamp it right on that solid rectangle. Then I take my rectangle stamp and I press it right down on, on my envelope and look at how it transfers that image right onto my envelope exactly the same way that I want it to go. Then I'm going to use a couple of these gel pens to just color in the flowers. I'm using this white here and it just makes those plum blossoms jump off the page. And plum blossoms have a little pink in them so I just add a little bit from this metallic pink gel pen and maybe a little gold to highlight the branch. Then I'm going to take this Chinese image cube and I'm going to stamp it to create a faux postage stamp. Using this plum color ink, tap it right on the square stamp my image and then using my black ink here I have this little Chinese lantern stamp and put it right over the top and I've created my own little postage stamp. The next thing is I want to use my color duster and the color duster has this brown ink on it because I kind of want to distress or sort of antique the edges of the envelope and I just brush the color right on the edges all around the outside 
And finally, I'm going to turn this around so I could write the address on here. Now, to finish this off, I'm just going to stamp one more image here in the corner. This is a kanji image. It's a Japanese word for love. And we'll just stamp that right in the center there. And that's going to be my finished top. Now I want to create a little bit of an extra score here to make the hinge so that my lid lays flat on top of the box. So I just score it about a quarter of an inch from the original fold line. And then when I fold it over, you notice that it's a little bit thicker in this one area here because that's going to accommodate the cardboard that I stuff inside my envelope. Now, I don't like to see this raw cardboard here, so I actually have a matching color note card, and I've trimmed off the edge, and I've scored it just like I did on the envelope flap, and I tuck that right in. Now, this one is trimmed because if I put this inside this, you can see how I'm going to assemble this now, the flap shows through this one frame, so I need to trim that off as well. I want to put one more piece of tape on this flap here, set that right on the inside of the flap, and peel off the backing. Then I take the frame that I made using this one envelope, align it right on the top here, right along that scored line, and then this whole thing sits right on top of that box. Just make sure that the center cutout is lined up. And when I close my flap, I've got the lid for my box. Now here's my ninth envelope here. And remember, I've stuffed it with the cardboard, but I didn't cut it out because this is what's going to create the bottom of my box. I put a little bit of the mosaic tape and just set that down. And remember, I don't have to have it lined up because I want this stack of letters to look random. And there is my finished box. You don't have to use just little envelopes to make your box. Can you believe I made this one out of packing envelopes that I got at the shipping store? I used some long envelopes here to make this beautiful long box. And I even made some smaller envelopes using our mini envelope template to create this cute little box. I have another small box here, but I can't seem to get the lid open. And the reason why is because I have a little lock that I've made with a straw and a shish kebab skewer. So that's how you make a secret letter box. It's a great way to keep some of your hidden treasures in plain sight. I hope you have fun with this, and I'll see you next time. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.